What's going on guys? Today I'm going to show you how to dirty up your image. Now you might be wondering to yourself, why would I want to dirty my image? Now this isn't for everyone. Obviously most people strive to get that sharp, crisp, clean look. And if you're shooting something for a client or for a promotional video, commercials, that kind of thing, you're going to want the sharpest image possible. If you're doing more creative things, more narrative style things, artistic things, stuff you want to feel very cinematic, it's actually very important to kind of destroy your image a little bit. Now the whole reason you'd want to destroy your image is to get it to look as cinematic and as film-like as possible. Because film is not perfect. Film is an analog media, so it has imperfections. You look at any old classic movie, it's not going to be as sharp and clean as any digital movie shot today. So what I'm going to show you is the techniques I use to dirty up my image and give it that more cinematic look. And less of a video feel that makes it seem like it's coming from a DSLR, which it is. So right here I'm in Premiere and we have opened the title sequence that um, I made for these various videos. Now these are very dirty images, they're not clean at all. So what I'm going to do is go step by step and show you what I did to dirty up this image. Alright, so I've stripped everything off. All these layers that I have on top of this are, are hidden right now, so these are just the clips. Now the first thing you got to do before dirtying your image is to actually clean it up. So, right here we have a, we have a quick uh, color correction going on. So this shot right here, it's a little underexposed, it's a little blue, so you throw in a quick uh, lumetri color, we brighten it up a little bit, we fix the white balance. So now that it's cleaned up, it's ready to be ruined again. Now the first step in destroying your image is color grading. Now you might be thinking, how is color grading destroying your image? Well, you're taking an accurate, realistic capture of a scene, and you're altering the colors for style purposes. So you're making your colors less accurate when you color grade. So I threw on this color grade right here. I think it looks pretty good. Um, if you're interested in, in coloring like this, you can download the LUT we made uh, in the description below. Now that we've got our color grade on there, it's looking pretty good, but it's looking too sharp. You know, film isn't that sharp. Um, so what we're gonna do is add a channel blur. Now I like the channel blur because you have the red blurriness, the green blurriness, and the blue blurriness. And you could take each of these channels and, and adjust them the way you want to. So now if we zoom in here, we can see how it's really affecting the image. Um, if I channel it on and off, you can see what it's doing. So it's taking the edges and it's almost making them look refracted like you're using a vintage lens. So you can see the colors are separating and they're, and they're being blurred around the edges. Now, this isn't a clean look, obviously. Now it could also smooth out digital pixels and digital grain to give it a more organic look and less like video. And if you take a look here, you could also see the effect that it has on the edge of the video. Right here we have this, this sort of yellowish blur which again makes it look more organic, covers up those video pixely things, and gives it the look of a vintage lens. Now the next step, because we blurred this image with the channel blur, we want to make it seem a little sharper again, so we're going to add some film grain. Film grain is one of the easiest things you could do to make your image look more organic and more cinematic. Right here we have sort of an aggressive um, film grain. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this for like a feature film, but for just like a quick intro or an, or an Instagram sequence, um, it looks pretty good. And you can see, even though our base layer image is blurred, the grain is very sharp. And that's pretty much the exact aesthetic of film. Um, the, the overall image might be a little soft, but you can see those fine um, film grains. And it just adds another layer of motion, something interesting um, to the screen. And a lot of people won't even notice the grain, but it's a subconscious thing that they're used to when they're watching older, more cinematic movies. So the image we have here is pretty awesome already. It looks cinematic, it looks 
old school vintage film, but we're gonna keep dirtying it up. So the next thing I put on top of this is a lens whacking filter. Now, this is obviously very aggressive. I wouldn't use this for anything other than this type of intro sequence or a transition or something like that because it's very distracting. But you can see the effect that it creates. Now this could be done uh, in camera, but what I've done is I've saved my personal lens whacking footage to keep for post-production. So if you click on this right here, um, this is something that I recorded uh, in my bedroom. I put a lens cap on the lens and then detached the lens from the camera and just started moving it around, catching light leaks, stuff like that. And it creates this really uh, beautiful pink light blooming image. Um, and basically what I did is I just put that on top of my footage and I added a screen mode. I kept the opacity at 100% just because I wanted that aggressive, dirty look for this intro sequence. But you could drop it way down and still get that sort of lens leak effect, just way less aggressive. But I like the pink light blooms in this footage. So there you go, those are four ways to dirty up your image and make it more cinematic. It's definitely very different looking at what we had here, straight out of the camera, and then transitioning to something like this. And like I said, this case is very aggressive, but using these techniques minimally can make it much more organic looking. And this isn't the only way to dirty up your image either. This is just a cinematic film look that I was going for. But you could do stuff like VHS overlays. You can go the digital video end with data moshing, which there's some super cool stuff you can do with that. Really, the sky's the limit. It's just about taking the footage that you have and stylizing it to something that you find visually appealing and separates it from the rest of the videos out there. Um, if you want to download uh, the LUT that I created or my lens whacking video, you could take both of those and overlay it onto your own stuff and see how you like it, manipulate it a little bit, try something new. But if you like this kind of filmmaking stuff, hit subscribe down below. I'll see you in the next one.